Awesome. I don't know about you guys, but I could keep doing the worship for the rest of the night. Can you guys come back out for the next half an hour and just keep leading us? Uh, <laughs> no, that was awesome. Hey, let's get up for Jesus real quick because that's who we get to worship. Okay, that was like, this side was really into it and this side was like kind of clapping. Okay, so real quick, I gotta make sure you guys are with me here. So if this, this side of the crowd, I need you on the count of three to shout something really loud. What should we shout? Are we shouting Jesus? Okay, on the count of three, I need you to shout as loud as you can, Jesus, okay? One, two, three. Jesus! No, not you guys. This is a competition, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're a little excited over here, okay? I was cheating. On the count of three, I need you guys to count, or I'll count. You say Jesus on three, okay? One, two, three. Jesus! There we go. All right, I think he heard us, hopefully. <clears throat> awesome. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Jason. I'm the student pastor here, and uh, I am so excited to be with y'all tonight. This is a night we're going to be at the end of the message. We'll celebrate uh, our seniors who are graduating. I know some of you guys already graduated uh, the other day, and some of you guys will be graduating this week. So super pumped, excited for you guys. We have something for y'all. Um, but I did want to share, before we get into that, a little bit of a message. Um, there's a passage of scripture that God, I feel like, was putting on my heart that I want to share with you guys. And I hope it is an encouragement for you where, wherever, God, you find yourself tonight in, in this season. Um, but to kind of start off, I do want to share a little bit of um, some statistics that I, um, I read in a book a couple years ago. I'm kind of curious to see what these are now. I feel like these numbers might have changed a little bit, maybe more or less. Um, but uh, there's a book um, by Dr. Ken Nichols, uh, and it's a book called Untie the Fear Knots of Your Life. And so if you're like me, sometimes I struggle with fear. It's probably like, if we're all honest, we all have to raise our hands. Um, you guys struggle with fear because you didn't even want to raise your hand because you're afraid of admitting that you have failure, because you're afraid of what people think about you or next to you. So we all struggle with that fear. And he wrote this book on it, and he kind of did some, uh, some uh, research and found some stats. Uh, but he made this statement where he said, there is more emotional and physical damage um, from fear-induced negative anticipation than fearful realities. Okay, that's kind of like a mouthful there, so let me say that again. There is more emotional and physical damage from fear-induced negative anticipation than fearful realities. And what he's saying is like, we have perceptions of our mind, thoughts and worries and fears of what might happen that can actually affect us negatively, physically and emotionally. And unfortunately, a lot of those times, those fears um, can be real or, at the end of the day, unreal. And so he kind of backed that up. He's sharing some statistics. 40% um, of the things that you and I worry about are things that never happen. 30% of our worries can things, concern things that are in the past. They're not even things coming up. 12% of our worries are needless, you know, are concerns about our health. 8% of our worries are actually legitimate concerns. Only 8%. So most of the things that you and I worry about will actually never come to be. Right, but we work ourselves up, we're afraid, we're worried about what might happen, and that can do some really difficult things to us. And again, this was taken a number of years ago, so I'm kind of curious to see what the stats are now. But, uh, but in general, it kind of talks a lot about fear and worry and how we can work ourselves up. And if you're anything like me, one thing that I've noticed in my life is that fear and worry hold me back from enjoying the things in front of me. They, help, they hinder me from enjoying life and, and the future and what could be because I'm worried about a negative might. Maybe this will happen. Maybe this could happen. And so sometimes that can hinder me from doing the thing that I'll actually enjoy. And so tonight I want to talk about a passage in Scripture that kind of addresses this a little bit. Um, but it's also a passage that I really think, as we think about, you know, finishing up this school year, kind of going into the summertime, um, there's a couple of things in this that I really think would be helpful for us. And I hope are an encouragement for you to really focus in on this th summer. There's three things that I really want to unpack a little bit. Um, but real quick, who here is excited about summer? Are you guys ready for summer? Okay. I'm excited about summer. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Not so excited about Virginia, summer humidity, so I'm already going to complain about that because we do that every year and it's always the same thing. We know it's coming, but it's going to come. Um, but I'm excited because we have our kids' jam um, and we have our summer camp and that's going to be amazing. Um, I'm going to be blobbing some people this year, so um, let's go. 
okay? Just I'm gonna blob you this year, it's gonna be great. I don't know if I'm gonna lie to you very happy, but we'll try. Um, the blob, if you don't know what that is, it's this huge inflatable like camp in the water. Um, we're on one end, you got one person, and the other person drops down from this big tower, hits the blob, launches the person way up in the air, and then eventually they land in the water or in some trees, somewhere far, far away. It's awesome, you guys have to try it out. Uh, most people live through it, uh, a few, you know, hey, you know, it's all good. But. Uh, it's an amazing thing. I'm really looking forward to that, and so you should definitely sign up for camp. Um, but alas, I do want to kind of focus in on this passage because I think summer is a great time for us. Obviously, we're slowing down. You don't got to worry about school. I know some of you guys get exams next week, but, but just pretend, all right, hey, we're going to get through that. It's going to be right. And then it's summertime. Unless you're Olivia and you're done and you just want to rub it in, you know. Um, all our seniors are up here. They're all done. Um, they're excited right now. They get a walk. We got to walk all day tomorrow, so <laughs> it's gonna be a long day, but it'll be a nice day. Um, but this summer, as we kind of unpack it um, and, and, and take some time to slow down, it's a great time to obviously, you know, just unwind a little bit. It's time to exhale. You got all the stress from school and exams and, and maybe all the different responsibilities you got, but it's a time where you can kind of slow down a little bit and enjoy. But I think summer is also a great opportunity to recharge. It's a great opportunity to reprioritize because sometimes, you know, this time of year, you're just doing everything you can to make it by. But when it comes summertime, you can kind of do some reflecting, some thinking through, you know, what matters most in life. And so in 1 John, I want to look there this, this evening, and it's 1 John chapter 4. So if you've got your Bibles with you, go and open up. Um, it'll also be on the screen. Um, this is uh, 1 John. This is written by a good figure. John, he's a good dude. He's one of the, the disciples of Jesus. And um, he wrote just in a very encouraging letter to a group of believers. And there's a big theme throughout it about talking about the importance of love and loving your neighbor and in that way, loving the Lord. And so in chapter four, I wanna pick up starting in verse 10 and we'll kind of read through it real quick. But here's what it says. This... <clears throat> Excuse me. This ascent, uh, oh man, excuse me. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in, lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely, everyone turn to your neighbor and say rely. Gotta make sure they're awake real quick. If they're, they're looking to sleep, you give them a get elbow real quick. Rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love we love because he first loved us. So I'm gonna stop there. That was a lot. I wanna unpack that a little bit. Um, but we're talking a lot about love. We're talking a lot about you know, fear and perfect love. And so I wanna unpack this a little bit for you guys. Um, if there are three things I would want you guys to kind of unpack about this passage, there's a lot to get out of this. Uh, but three things I really wanna focus on tonight um, that you and I can, if uh, we can do this summer and we can apply this summer, if we do these things, I think it would really help us out. And it'll help us out with maybe some of the things that we're worried about, some of the things we're concerned about or fearful of or anxious of. This is some things that I think could really do us good. And so the first one is this, abide and delight in God's love for you. We say that again, abide and delight in God's love for you. In verse 10, it says this, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And so he loved us first, and how did he do that? He sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Verse 12 says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. 
And I love verse 16. God is love. Whoever loves, whoever lives in love lives in God and God is in them. You know, I think so many times we hear, you know, hey, God loves us, God cares about us. And, and if you've grown up in church many times, maybe you've heard it, you know, many, many times, or almost it just becomes kind of numb to it. You're like, okay, whatever, that's just, you know, something that says in the Bible. But we don't really think about that and the meaning and the significance behind saying such a thing as that, right? Because when we're talking about God, we're talking about the creator of the universe, Right, we're talking about the very one who spoke the universe in existence, the very one who, who created every single one of us, who created the planets, who created the stars and the galaxies, you know, every little uh, atom and proton, every little part of skin cell, everything about me, all the detail, all the, the vastness of this universe, he created all of that. This is the God that says he loves us. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I think about the greatness of God, it makes me feel really small and makes me think, why would he want anything to do with me? Right, and as, as scripture teaches us, and we've even seen this a little bit, you know, we sinned and our sin separated us from God. We went to go our own way. And so what did God do? Instead of just saying, you know, forget you guys, I'm gonna restart, he chose to send his son to die on a cross so that we could be forgiven and we could be in a relationship with him. And so when we talk about a God who loves us, this great, all-powerful God, like, this is a big deal. And I don't want us to ever just, like, take that for granted. Like, that is amazing, right? Just because you've heard it a thousand times, like, know the fact that that same person wants to be with you. He said, you know what? You are worth it. I value enough to die for you. That is what God said, and that is what God did for you and me. This, tonight, I don't know what you, know, you may be going through in your life or what you're struggling with, and maybe you know, this is the first time you're ever hearing something like this. This is some creator God who actually loves me and cares me. I want you to know that he loves you more than you'll ever know. He knows every hair by, you know, and, and names every hair in your head. He knows every detail about you. And there's nothing that you could ever do to stop, make him to stop loving you. He loves you. And so for us, as, as we kind of, you know, experience this love and understand this love, you know, what the John is encouraging us to do is like, as God loves us, right, as he first loved us, loved us while we were still sinners, right, we should also seek to love and to, to be in a relationship with him, to know him, to, you know, abide in him. And so the, this abiding, this, this closeness, this relationship, this following after takes place, and we get to be in a relationship. Christianity is so much different than any other religion. Every other religion, it's about a to-do list, or it's, hey, I gotta do this, this, and this to appease this higher power, and then maybe I'll be good enough to, to get into heaven. No, the, our Christianity, what Christianity is about is, hey, it's about what our higher power, God, did for us, not something we could do on our own, but it's by grace, he wants to be in a relationship with you. And so for us this summer, we have an amazing opportunity. We've got some free time where we can actually spend time with him. I know you're probably here to charge, oh, I gotta spend time with God, I gotta read my Bible, I gotta pray, and it just sounds kind of dull or kind of sounds not that significant, but no, this is a big deal that you get to spend time with the creator of the universe. You get to spend time with that same God who can do all those great and mighty and powerful things, and he wants to spend time with you. He really does. And so for us, man, we have an amazing opportunity this summer to dive in, you know, whether it's in through his word where he's shared some amazing truths that can help us in our everyday life to grow closer to him and to help, you know, in our everyday situations. He's, you know, obviously we have full access through prayer. We can talk to him about anything and we can be real with him. And we've got a group of people here in community that can encourage one another as well. So I wanna encourage you this summer to really make the most of this time and abide. And the reason I say delight is to enjoy that you get to be in relationship with Jesus. It's not just this fear-based, like, ah, you know, I gotta be careful. Like, no, we can be real with God. We can, we can come to him, not out of fear, as he says, uh, but out of love. There is no fear in love. And so we can be in an amazing relationship with Jesus. And I would encourage you this summer, we've got some opportunities where you can be encouraged and, and reminded of that and help other people that can come alongside you and point to that. And so this summer, we're gonna be doing some things, uh, these midweek uh, uh, off-campus groups um, where, it's, you know, for the high school guys, we're meeting over at Quidobo over in Gainesville. We're gonna meet for the month of July, and I don't know, Justin's got some groups with the middle school boys and all the girls do as well. 
And it's gonna be a great opportunity where we're really gonna dive into God's word. We're really gonna get to know him more, to study more about what he has for us to do in our lives. And so I'd encourage you to get plugged in one of those things. And you can really take advantage of the time that you have this summer. The second thing I wanna encourage you to do this summer is to rely on God's love for you. Rely on God's love for you. In verse 16, it says, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. For me, when I was reading this passage, that, that word, just that, that verb really stood out for some reason, this idea of relying, right? Because in many times in our lives, you know, maybe you've, you've given your life to Jesus and you're kind of doing your own thing and you go through something tough and you're trying to figure out on your own, you're struggling with it and you get to this point where you're saying, all right, all I can do now is pray, like, you ever heard that phrase, someone say that? It's like, all right, kind of the interrupts. Now that I've done everything I can try, well, I might as well just try this, like, little Hail Mary try, and, and maybe it'll work out. We treat prayer and, and relying on God as kind of this last resort. When I would say it should be our first resort, right? This is the creator of the universe. This is the God who, who's all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, you know, uh, this great God. Like, we should be going to him immediately, Right, when we say, hey, I'm praying for you, like, all right, that can be like a salutation, and that's no good, but if it's sincere, like, hey, you know what, I heard you're struggling with this, and I just wanna pray for you, because I believe that the, the creator of the universe, I have access to him, I can call him up, and he can help us out, and he wants to help us out, right? We have that opportunity in prayer. You know, for me, I think so many times in my relationship, uh, I, I like to say, oh yeah, you know, I trust in God, and, but then a lot of times I try to do it on my own strength, I try to do it my own way, and then I realize, oh, I need to go to God, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. When that's something that I'm wasting a lot of time, if I just would've went from the beginning, and then as I start going doing, I would've found the strength that I needed, and the perspective I needed. It's so important for us to rely on our relationship with God. So, so important. The third thing I wanna encourage us to do this summer is to uh, love one another because of God's love for you. Love one another because of God's love for you. Verse 11 says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So this is so fundamental and essential to the book of 1 John. He's saying it throughout the whole entire letter, like, hey, if you love God, love one another. If this love that God has is truly in you, then it should be expressed outwardly to the people that God's placed in your life. Now, obviously, some people are a little easier to love than others, all right? You don't have to look to the person next to you, but I get it, you can just kind of wink at me, I get it, I get it. Some people are a little tough to love. But it's important for us to do that because sometimes if we're not, I know we don't like the miss, but maybe we're not always the easiest to love. Maybe we don't all have it together like we like to say we do. Maybe it wasn't so easy for God to, you know, send his son to die on a cross. That probably wasn't so easy for him. But that's what real love is all about. Right, real love is saying, you know, I wanna care for you, not just because of what I can get out of this relationship, because I just genuinely want to care for you. We get to do that because of what God has done for us and how he's modeled it for us. And so this summer, I know there's a lot of fun opportunities to go hang out and do a lot of those things you wanna do, and I, I get that. But I wanna make sure that this summer isn't just about you. I don't want this summer just to be about me. I want this summer to be about uh, an opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life. Because we live in a culture and a world that's all about me, 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 me. But the problem with that is a lot of people get left in the margins, they get hurt and feel left out when we do that. And our friend groups and our, our, our maybe our, our different sports teams that, you know, throughout the summer, there's gonna be opportunities for you to love and care for those people. And there's also a great opportunity this summer, like we've been talking about this for weeks, about this upcoming Kids Summer Jam. It's kind of our VBS. And it's a great way for you to serve and to love on some people um, who may be coming in who've never heard about Jesus, never been to church before. Maybe they're struggling with something at home. What would it look like this summer if you were the person that made a difference in their life? You know, and in June 27th when it starts, there will be some kids that'll be here sitting in these same chairs 
that don't have a, a, a safe home environment, they don't have a, 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 you know, a, both parents in their lives and they maybe struggle with a lot of things and, and they've never heard someone tell them that they love them, that they care about them, they've never heard about Jesus, they've never had someone tell them that they, that they believe in them and this could be the very first time someone does that and that person could be you. You can make a difference in that person's life simply by sitting with them saying, hey, nice shoes, leading them in soccer or basketball in a Bible study, some music songs, you can make that kind of impact in someone's life if you're willing to take the time to do it. I wanna finish with a story. Um, something happened to me last weekend. Um, this is kind of uh, not something I was planning by any means, but uh, my brother was moving out to uh, Stanton, Virginia, which is about two and a half hours from here. It's a little bit out in the west uh, of Virginia in the mountains. And uh, he was moving out there, and so I wanted uh, to drive out and help him move a lot of the furniture. So I was actually not looking forward to it all because it's a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I gotta be a good brother. I gotta go help him out. I'm the younger brother. And um, he's just got daughters, so no one else is gonna move the furniture except him. So I had to come on out make the two and a half hour drive. Me and Eli went out uh, last Friday, and so it was kind of a rainy day. We made the drive. We got about halfway out there to Winchester, um, just kind of the middle way, and stopped to go use the restroom, go back into the car. Eli and I get, you know, strapped in, about to drive out, and sure enough, as I'm starting to pull out, and obviously it's pouring down rain, um, so smoke starts coming out of my car. And when I say a little bit of smoke, I mean like a lot of smoke, okay? And I've just bought this car in December, okay? I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little frustrated, okay? It's just smoke. So I start, you know, pulling on the accelerator. It's not really going anywhere. So I turn the engine off, turn it back on, and I'm able to like pull back in the parking lot just barely. And I'm kind of stranded, okay? I'm about in the halfway point from Stanton to, to back home in, where I live in Gainesville. And I'm um, kind of in this moment of panic. What am I gonna do? I'm in the middle of nowhere. I don't know this area because I just passed the big city, or not big city, but city-ish in Winchester. And I'm kind of in this moment, not knowing what to do. Um, the car's just like not working out. There's this grinding noise, you know, in the engine. Turns out it was an alternator that went bad. Um, but I'm in this moment, I'm freaking out. I just got this car fixed a couple months ago and here it is, broken again. It's pouring down rain. I'm trying to open the hood and I'm getting soaked. Eli's fussing in the car. He's kind of freaking out. I think he was also kind of hungry. And so we're just kind of having this moment, you know, just this kumbaya moment in the rain. And uh, this truck driver got this big 18-wheeler, he pulls up, um, and at first I'm like, okay, this is like, this is going to turn into one of those movies or something. Um, he gets out, he's actually like, it's kind of cool, he's got it, like, I'm picturing like truck driver, big tough guy, and he's like, just this skinny dude, uh, he's got gym shorts on, he's got his dog in his truck, he's like the nicest dude in the world, and he's like, hey man, you all right? No. <laughs> so he comes out, he starts helping me out, looking at the vehicle, he's like, yeah, it's probably your alternator. I was like, but you might be able to get a little ways. And I was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, you should be good a little ways, you know, maybe a couple miles. And I was like, I live like an hour from here. Um, but he helps me out, you know, he's trying to encourage me, calm me down a little bit, you know, asking me questions. Super, super nice dude. That was a godsend. Um, get back in my car, start heading back home. It's not smoking anymore, but it's definitely got that grinding noise. I can't really get past like 30 miles an hour. But I'm driving home, and then sure enough, I'm soaked in the car from being out, so I'm like frustrated, Eli's frustrated. And then we start seeing some cars up ahead on the interstate. And sure enough, there's a big accident on 66. And when I say a bad accident, I mean like this truck is literally like on fire on the side of the road. And so the traffic's really backed up. My car battery warning light starts coming on and I'm not moving anywhere because all the traffic. I'm freaking out, all right? There's a big accident, I'm not moving anywhere for probably about an hour, and my car's about to stall, and I'm probably just gonna make this whole like traffic jam even worse, because I'm gonna join the wreck. So I'm panicking, I'm freaking out, what am I gonna do? I've got my son in the back, and I, I wanna make sure he's okay, and, and in the meanwhile, I don't know what to do. My phone is about to die too, and, and sure enough, because my alternator is going bad, that affects the, the power in the car. I can't even charge my phone. And so I just start praying, God, I need you in this moment, I am struggling. And that's when it really started hitting me. That for me, I was trying in this moment, just panicking, trying to figure out what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do, all on my own. And what I began to feel like God was speaking to me is that I needed to trust him. I needed just to abide in him. And so as I'm getting through it, you know, it's a, it's a long, but we're slowly moving, slowly moving with the traffic. We finally get through. Um, I get another couple miles to pull off and stop at a 7-Eleven. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna get a tow truck. I'm trying to, trying to do it on my own and just force it. I'm just gonna get the tow truck. 
Um, and so while we're waiting for the tow truck, it was just a moment for Eli and I. We just sat right at the 7-Eleven. Um, it was actually right next to this Apple House I placed over in uh, Lind- Linden, I think it was. Really good food there, by the way. Go check it out. Um, and so we just kind of have a moment together, about an hour sitting, waiting, and we're able to connect. And it really got me reflecting as I was waiting and spending time with him about all the things I was worrying about. And then I was thinking about how faithful God has been to me throughout my life. You know, for me in that moment, I'm kind of freaking out, like, how am I going to fix this? What am I going to do? How am I going to afford this? You know, all those different things. But then God began to really kind of whisper, and sometimes he kind of whispers and say, hey, dude, come on. And he reminded me of how many times he's been, I've been through worse, and he continues to deliver again and again and again. And for me, it was kind of that moment I realized, you know what, I need to stop relying on my strength. I just needed to abide in him and trust him rely on him instead of relying on myself, and I'll get through it. And then as I got through it, I began to realize, you know what, if I'm not so worried about myself and, and what's going on, all my woe is me, I actually got an opportunity to hang out with my son, and we can get some 7-Eleven. We can get some really nasty pizza at 7-Eleven. It's gross, but it is cheap, but it's gross. And we actually had a cool moment, okay? And so for me, I just want to encourage you as you're thinking about all the different things you may be worrying about in your life and all the fears and whether it's fear of just different relationships or fear of your final exams or whatever it is that you find yourself struggling with tonight, to just abide in God, be in a relationship with him, draw close to him, rely on him, and he'll see you through it. The bottom line for tonight is this, as we abide and rely on God's love, we find confidence to share God's love. And as you abide and rely, sometimes our perspective begins to change. We realize, you know what, God's got me. He's got me before, he'll get me again. You know, there's actually some people right next to me that I could really encourage. Who is it this summer that you can reach? Who is it this summer that God has strategically placed in your life that you can share God's love with? Let's pray. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you that uh, you love us, even when we don't love you, even when we're not the best, even when we make mistakes and we fall short, you love us all the more. God, thank you that even when life is tough and things don't go the way we plan and we're on this journey and everything that could go wrong goes wrong or we just don't understand, thank you that even when we can't see the end of the road, we can see you. We can cast our cares on you, and as we seek after you, you will take care of those things. So we don't have to worry about tomorrow. We can just live in the moment with you and realize the potential around us to help other people. God, help us Help us to love the world, the people in our life, the way you love us. Help us to not keep it to ourselves. Help us to seize the moment this summer, to bask in the moment of uh, the reward of being able to pour into someone else's life and see their life change and how that changes our life. God, thank you so much the way that works like that. So God, help us to abide in you this summer, to grow closer to you and rely on you, and to make a difference in our communities, in our homes, in our schools, on our sports teams, and in Northern Virginia. We love you, we thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, tonight I wanna finish um, with, uh, we got some stuff for our seniors. And so, um, uh, Justin, if you could just go and help me grab those real quick. And so, uh, tonight is kind of our senior night. So, um, so we never want to see you again after this, guys. Ryan, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I want to see you guys all the time. You better come back or I'm going to be mad, okay? Um, but now, uh, if you are a 2022 uh, graduate, if you guys could come and stand up and come on up to the stage. We got some goodies for y'all. Come on up. Jane, come on up. Any other seniors? Come on over. All right, so we got some uh, bags for you guys. Go ahead and grab a a basket. Um, In that basket, we got some goodies, um, some college food. Uh, So we got, I believe, some really gross food because college food is like ramen as a joke. But we also got you really cool devotional and some, uh, some sweet stuff. So go ahead and grab one of those.
and then come on back over here. But make sure you get the right one because they're all the same, okay? They're, okay. <laughs> oh, there's soda in them, okay. All right, come on over here when you got them, guys. Maybe I should have given them to you at last thing. I should have done that. Yeah. We got, uh, we got some donuts. Let's go. Reese's. When you guys graduate, you'll get Reese's. I mean, come on. This is what happens when you go to church. Good stuff happens. Hey, um, but real quick, as we kind of finish up, I do want to take a moment to um, just to pray for our seniors. Um, uh, but before we do that, like we talked about this idea of prayer, we get to intercede on your behalf to the creator of the universe who's all powerful. And so you guys are going to need it, especially people going to JMU. Oh, sorry, Ryan. You're doing band, so you're going to need lots of sleep. Jacob's going to need lots of sleep too now because he's about to go to, to uh, boot camp. So praying for you, man. But you're going to do great. Uh, but I just want to take a moment to recognize you guys and say, first and foremost, um, I know a lot of you guys for about four years now or so. Um, and, um, well, right, I mean, you know, well, you moved here a little later, so. But, but a couple years still, it's been a blessing. And uh, I'm just say, I just want to say I'm really proud of each one of you. It's been a, a blessing uh, to just to get to walk alongside this small part of your journey. Um, but it's cool to see how you guys have grown over this time. Um, and uh, so I'm proud of you. I know our leaders are proud of you. We're excited for you in this next journey. All your hard work and procrastination has paid off. You got a degree. Um, well, barely. Hey, all that matters you got there, okay? So uh, we're super happy for y'all, and um, just know that as a student ministry, I mean, obviously we're still hanging out this summer, so you can't get rid of us that soon. But I would encourage you guys to come back. Um, these students, we're gonna be looking up to you guys as an example, and so you need to come back and pour into them as well. Um, but know that we're here for y'all always. We love you guys, um, and we know that there's a great God who loves you even more. And so let's just pray. And if you guys could, let's just pray for our seniors as they get ready to head on off for college. God, thank you so, so much for each uh, 2022 graduate here. Thank you for just the way you've uniquely created them and gifted them, um, you know, and they're just even beginning to, to figure out what that is and the potential and the things you've called to do, um, uh, you know, for them to do with their lives. And it's just so exciting to see them begin to like tap into that and discover what that might be. God, I pray that as they get ready to embark on this next season of their lives, God, that you would just go before them. Your Holy Spirit would just guide them and be that, that wisdom for them as they're trying to make decisions and tough choices and, and trying to figure out college and all the things that goes into that. God, I pray that you would always just remind them that still small voice to let them know that they are loved. They are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image and likeness, God. God, I pray that they would go knowing whose they are, always knowing whose they are. God, I thank you so much for this season of them growing. I thank you so much for the parents and the leaders who've been pouring into them all these years. Obviously, there's a lot of bumps in the road, but it's so cool to see that, you know, as we come alongside one another as a church family, we can grow together. So God, I thank you for those people as well. And I just thank you for each senior here and their hearts for you and their hearts to wanna grow. So God, we love you, we thank you, and we lift these sen seniors up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, let's give it up for our 2020 new graduates. All right, you guys can take a seat. Good job. Thank you all. All right. Hey, y'all, before we uh, dismiss tonight, can I get everyone's attention real quick? Guys on the right over here, make sure everyone's listening. I'll give the seniors a second to uh, get back to their seats. But... Uh, Hey, I just want to say, if you, you know, take away anything from Jason's message tonight, please know that the God, the creator of the universe loves you. He sent his one and only son to die for you. And so I hope tonight that you could just be reminded of that truth and let that love overflow into everything that you do. Uh, we look forward to seeing you for, you know, some of the events that we have planned this summer and of course, Kids Summer Jam. And of course, um, just some of the groups that we're doing as well. So the, uh, the last thing I wanna let you know before you go out the doors is that if it's your first time here tonight, we have a special gift for you. We have a $10 Chick-fil-A card and a student ministry t-shirt that we would love to get to you. All you have to do is exit out those doors right there and go see Miss Heather by the next steps table. She'll get you your gift card. So once again, if that's your first time here, make sure you stop by that table and uh, 
get that. Other than that, there's also a box on there if you have any prayer requests. We'd love to just be praying for some of the things that you guys have going on in your life. But that's pretty much it for tonight. Our next highlight is going to be on June 26th, Slip and Slide Kickball. Until then, we'll have groups on Sunday mornings at 1130, so be sure to join us for that as well. So everyone, go out. Have a great week. Finish school strong, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday for groups. You're dismissed. <laughs>